I first came to South Carolina as a young lawyer working for the Children's Defense Fund, started by your own South Carolina native, Marion Wright Edelman from Bennettsville. Marion Wright Edelman, we just heard Hillary Rodham Clinton. She used to be the head of the board of the Children's Defense Fund of the organization that you founded. Uh, but you were extremely critical of the Clintons. I mean, when President Clinton signed off on the uh, well, so-called welfare reform bill, you said his signature on this pernicious bill makes a mockery of his pledge not to hurt children. So what are your hopes right now for these Democrats? And what are your thoughts about Hillary Rodham Clinton? Well, you know, Hillary Clinton's an old friend, but they're not friends in politics. We have to build a constituency, and you don't. And we profoundly disagreed with the forms of the, ch of the welfare reform bill, um, and we said so. Um, we were for welfare reform. I am for welfare reform, but we need good jobs. We need adequate work incentives. We need minimum wage to be decent wage and livable wage. We need health care. We need transportation. We need to invest preventively in all of our children to prevent them ever having to be on welfare and yet you know many years after that when many people are pronouncing welfare reform a great success you know we've got growing child poverty we have more children in poverty and in extreme poverty over the last six years by the time bill and i left the white house welfare rolls had dropped 60 percent and millions of parents had gone to work by january 2001 child poverty had decreased by over 25 percent and was at its lowest rate since 1979. Uh, the presumption from the Clinton campaign is this isn't just about uh, likability. This isn't just about familiarity. This is about what has been done. And while Bernie Sanders says the right things, he's had a lot of years in the Senate. Mm. He has not mm. done things for the African community the way Hillary Clinton has. Fair criticism. No, not at all. I mean, when Bernie Sanders, one of the two white public officials who supported Jesse Jackson in the 80s, that took tremendous courage. Why did Brother Jesse win the primary in Vermont? Bernie Sanders. My dear Brother Chris, Sister Hillary Clinton is the Millie Vanilli of American politics. She lip sings, she gives lip service, but when it comes to policy, who supported crime bill? Who supported the, not just the deregulating of market, of banks, but also pulled the rug from under welfare. She talks about her work with the Children's Defense Fund way back in the 70s. Doesn't say a word about being a Goldwater girl. Doesn't say a word about supporting a candidate who Martin Luther King called the we had, we can, there's no moral case for Goldwater. He's the most dangerous politician. She's vigorously campaigning. She shows up and gives these wonderful speeches sounding like Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders on the ground getting arrested, marching with Martin. The problem is black voters don't know his history in the way in which they know the symbolic language well, of Bernie Sanders Hillary Clinton. is an extremely interesting phenomenon. He's a decent, honest person. That's pretty unusual in the political system. Uh, maybe there are two of them in the world. You know? <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> but uh, he's, uh, he's considered uh, a radical and extremist, which is a pretty interesting characterization uh, because he's basically a mainstream New Deal Democrat. His positions uh, would not have surprised President Eisenhower, who said, in fact, that uh, anyone who does not accept New Deal programs doesn't belong in the American political system. Uh, that's now considered very radical. Uh, the other interesting aspect of Sanders's positions is that they're quite strongly supported by the general public and have been for a long time. That's true on taxes, it's true on health care. Uh, so take, say, health care. Uh, his, his proposal for a national health care system, meaning the kind of system that just about every other developed country has, uh, at uh, half the per capita cost of the United States and uh, comparable or better outcomes, uh, that's considered very radical. But it's been the position of the majority of the American population for a long time. Bernie Sanders could win in a general election. I actually think he is a significantly better candidate 
than Hillary Clinton. Um, you know, it's one of those things where, where, where the logic of her candidacy was because she had so much money. A lot of it was just like, she's unbeatable. She's like, look, look at how deep the pockets are there, right? But the irony is, is it's where that money comes from and the entanglement of the Clinton Foundation with so many corporations and so many governments that is what makes her vulnerable. So at the one, on the one hand, it's what supposedly makes it inevitable, and on the other hand, it's, it's what I think makes her a very weak candidate and makes Bernie Sanders a much better candidate. And Hillary Clinton, finally, after much delaying and umming and eyeing, uh, came out against a controversial Keystone XL pipeline uh, between Canada and the United States that you've been campaigning against for so long. Do you trust her if she does make it to the White House on climate change to take the action that's necessary to do the right thing? I don't trust her on climate at all. Um, and I don't trust her because as Secretary of State, when she had you know, a huge megaphone to make this an issue to show that she understands the connections between human security and climate, she didn't use the megaphone. I mean, if you compare her with John Kerry, you know, immediately, you know, one of his you know, first speeches is about climate change and human security. He talks about climate change as a weapon of mass destruction. He connects it with the war in Syria. I think he understands it really, really well. Um, Hillary Clinton never showed that as Secretary of State. Uh, and, uh, you know, more than that, you know, she also, uh, you know, there, was, there, there were connections between her campaign staff and uh, TransCanada and all these things that I think are, make her very vulnerable. And as in 2006, when Senator Sanders was running for the Senate from Vermont, uh, he uh, voted in the House with hardline Republicans for indefinite detention for undocumented immigrants. And then he sided with those Republicans to stand with vigilantes known as Minutemen who were taking up outposts <coughs> along the border to hunt down immigrants. But they did just put up a little video praising you for being the only Democrat who stood with the Republicans to try to eliminate the Export-Import right. Bank, which has helped hundreds and hundreds of companies here in Florida be able to export their goods okay, think... and employ more Floridians. The clean power plan is something that Senator Sanders has said he would delay implementing, which makes absolutely no what? sense. She's right. None of those things would make any sense because each of those statements is either only partially true or an outright lie. And if she keeps up this tactic of trying to smear Bernie's voting record to portray him as some kind of a friend of conservative causes, it's going to cost Democrats, all Democrats, the general election. At a debate in January, Hillary claimed that Bernie Sanders voted for the Commodity Futures Modernization Act, the CFMA. And I wrote back then that it was the most disingenuous attack from Clinton yet. That's because Bernie had voted against the CFMA originally, but bit the bullet and voted for the CMFA when it had been shoved into the omnibus spending bill at the last minute. And everybody in Congress, except Ron Paul and three others, voted for it to keep from shutting the government down. She made that attack back before the Iowa caucus and the New Hampshire primary. And the claim that Bernie voted for the CMFA, or CFMA, and contributed to the financial crisis seemed to simply fade away. Then during the March 6th Democratic debate in Flint, Michigan, Hillary tried to cast Bernie as an enemy of the American auto industry. I'll tell you something else that Senator Sanders was against. He was against the auto bailout. Except that Bernie Sanders strongly supported the auto bailout. What he opposed was the larger $700 billion bailout to prop up Wall Street and the big banks. PolitiFact rated her claim as only half true, and the Washington Post and the New York Times both published articles describing how Hillary is intentionally deceiving voters with this claim. As Amber Phillips over at the Washington Post wrote after the debate in Flint, it seems like she's willing to take the gamble that fact checkers may call her out on her tactics Sunday, but that voters won't. The Washington Post published that before Tuesday's Michigan primary when Bernie won an historic upset over Hillary Clinton after the polls projected a 20-point loss for Sanders. The Clinton campaign could have looked at that loss as evidence that she lost Michigan because voters were turned off by her deceitful portrayal of Bernie's voting record. But apparently that's not her, how her campaign interpreted the results. The New York Times editorial board wrote that Mrs. Can Clinton's candidacy speaks eloquently of embracing the people, values, and think thinking that makes this nation a leader in the world. But her campaign tactics, particularly in Michigan, did not live up to this mission. And based on the polls, her attacks on Bernie really aren't helping her in the eyes of voters. According to a new Washington Post-ABC poll, 
Clinton's margin over Sanders has shrunk by over half of where it was in January before the first primary votes were cast. The New York Times editorial board wrote bluntly before Wednesday's debate that if she hopes to unify Democrats as the nominee, trying to tarnish Mr. Sanders, as she did in Michigan this week, is not the way to go. Clinton must not have gotten that memo. The same day that the New York Times called for the campaign to stop trying to attack Sanders on the auto bailout, Clinton campaign manager Robbie Mook was telling CBS News and Mother Jones, this is an important distinction between Secretary Clinton and Senator Sanders. We think it's important that voters know that information. So it doesn't seem like the campaign is going to stop muddying the waters with half-truths about the auto bailout anytime soon. And based on what we saw in the debate in Miami last night, She's expanding her range of half-true or even outright false attacks against Bernie Sanders. To be clear, Bernie Sanders never supported the Minutemen. Bernie Sanders did not support indefinite detention. In fact, Senator Sanders voted for the National Defense Authorization Act when it prevented indefinite detention. But that bill was tampered with by members over in the House. Sanders didn't even vote against small businesses in Florida when he voted to end the Export-Import Bank, and he did vote for ending some of the corporate welfare that Boeing and General Electric get from the U.S. government. When Hillary says that Bernie wants to delay the clean power plan, she really means that it might take a little bit longer to fully implement because Bernie's plan is more ambitious than hers or President Obama's. Hillary is trying to make it look like Bernie Sanders talks progressive but votes conservative, and it's not working. It's not working because we live in the internet age where facts can be checked and the record corrected almost instantaneously. And it's not working because the Clinton name, tragically, isn't synonymous with honesty in American politics. Instead, it's synonymous with half-truths, distorted facts, and nitpicking like, depends on what your definition of the word is, is semantics. What does it mean to live a moral life? When we talk about morality, and when we talk about justice, we have to understand that there is no justice when so few have so much and so many have so little. There is no justice when the top one-tenth of one percent owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent. Millions of people are working long hours for abysmally low wages, working hard but unable to bring in enough money to adequately feed their kids. There is no justice when the United States of America has the highest rate of childhood poverty of any major country on earth. How can we talk about morality, about justice, when we turn our backs on the children of our country? We have in this country sufficient amounts of money to put more people in jail than any other country on earth. But apparently, we do not have enough money to provide jobs and education to our young people. We are the only major country on earth that does not guarantee health care to all people as a right. All of God's children, the poor, the wretched, they have a right to go to a doctor when they are sick. I want you to think of what this great country can be. We can be a nation which joins other nations around the world in guaranteeing health care to all people as a right. We can be a nation in which working parents can get quality, affordable child care. We can be a nation in which every American, regardless of his or her income, can get a college education. We can be a nation in which every senior lives out their lives in dignity and security. We can be a nation in where everyone, no matter their race, their religion, 
their disability or their sexual orientation realizes the full promise of equality that is our birthright as Americans. Brothers and sisters, this is the nation we can create when we stand together and not let people divide us. The history of America and the fight for human dignity is a history of struggle. They struggled because they said, I am a human being. I have rights. You can't do that to me. I need dignity. And unions were formed, and people fought, and people died, and people were beaten, and people went to jail. When millions of people stand up and fight, they win. If Bernie does not win the primary, will you guys be voting for Hillary? No, no, no. absolutely not. No, no, no one no. here. I have a Bernie, for, Bernie or Bus sign here somewhere. Yeah, yeah. you're one of the Bernie. You're all I Bernie or Busters. I truly that he runs as an independent if he doesn't get the Democratic nomination. Okay. But if he doesn't, I'm going to put my shirt elsewhere. Bobby, turn side around. Okay, so you're not going to vote for president. I will not vote for Hillary. I'll probably vote for Kasich if he doesn't win. Wow. So if. Bernie, heaven forbid, doesn't win the primary and Hillary Clinton's the nominee. Are you guys going to vote for Hillary? Absolutely not. No. No. None of you? No. I mean, no. Steve, Steve, Steve's got some angst. I'm, I don't want to. I yeah. really don't want to, but so to what's, what's the alternative? Specific. What are you going to do? Are you going to stay home? I, I'm walking on to, I haven't decided, walking on into the March, July 24th, marching oh. on, showing the superdelegates. I emailed, there's a website, it's I, it's called hintit.com, mm -hmm. and you can look up your superdelegates information. Mm -hmm. I sent them an email just like, telling them all, hey, uh, I'm a student, I'm a dropout, I have tons of debt, I have to work 40 hours a week, I am not voting for anybody besides Bernie Sanders, mm -hmm. he's the only candidate. He made me have faith in this country. And I just think that we need to scare the superdelegates. The people we need to stand together, scream as loud as we can, mm -hmm. and make them do what we want. If Bernie Sanders does not win the primary, will you vote for Hillary Clinton? Uh, reluctantly, gritting my teeth. Uh, yeah. I feel like, unfortunately, there's not much of an alternative there. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say that uh, Kasich would be my choice as a Republican, but I will be voting Democrat in the fall, more or less, no matter the ticket. Okay. All right, what about you folks? What do you think? I have to agree with him. I couldn't vote, vote for Republican. So if Bernie does not win the primary, will you guys be voting for Hillary in the fall? Uh, no. no. No, why not? Let anyone tell you she is the opposite of what we need. She's a political <laughs> Okay. I, I honestly don't know. I don't know who's worse. Her or Donald Trump is... Mm. Uh, that's Yikes. a terrible comparison. Yikes. <laughs> that's fired. So would you stay at home or would you vote for Donald Trump or Ted Cruz? I'd have to I'd have to take time to think about that. Okay. All right. Yeah, what about we'll you? Press when we get there. That's a big We're yeah. hoping it doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. If, if somehow Kasich comes out of the convention, yeah. I'd go with Kasich. Yeah. yeah. Kasich Over agreed. Hillary. Agreed. Yes. Yes. Every Thank time. You. This guy's yeah. shaking his head. He said he doesn't want to talk, but he's shaking his head. I'm only voting for one person, and if he doesn't come out of it, then I stay home. I mean, Kasich's okay. the only Republican yeah. candidate that I would actually... Yeah, Kasich is reasonable. the best Republican candidate, because he calls Trump out. This is interesting. <laughs>